uh, because Professor Chaturong is lecturing in another conference room, so I will be presenting this topic in his honor. The second class is the 59 years of female who had a complaint of her right hip pain for two months. The present illness was uh, he, she had off and on of right hip pain after an accident a year ago, and she could not uh, she could walk normally and she received conservative treatment at the local clinic. Two months prior to admission, she fell on her right hip pain and the high, the, had a right hip pain. She could not bear it for a few days, but then she started to walk with walker. And she noticed that her right leg was shorter than left leg and she did not come to the hospital. One month later, her right hip pain got worse and she could not walk and needed wheelchair emulation. Her right pain had a positive rest pain and night pain characteristic. She had no constitutional symptoms, she had no fever, she had no history of contact tuberculosis patient. Her characteristic, uh, she loved using herbal medicines for a year, and she was non-smoker patient, she was non-alcoholic too. Her pre-injury status was the outdoor independent with Walker, and her occupation is her wife. For her physical examination, her right hip had no rest net and no warmth and no previous scar. Uh, the tendon net uh, appeared at the right groin at the trochanteric area as the maximum tendon net point. The range of motion are as shown in this slide. The flexion is around 110, the extension is about 5 degrees, the abduction is 45, and adduction is 30. The internal rotation is 5 degrees and the external rotation is around 30 degrees. The limb length discrepancy are, uh, is around 1 cm shorter than right side and her neurovascular system was intact. The annual test is positive and the rolling test is positive. Here is her radiographic. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Papum. Uh, we'll start this discussion. Do, do you have any, any x-ray? Only one x-ray? I have a lateral cross table. Okay, let's see the lateral cross table. Okay. Okay, thank you. Please go back to the AP one. Uh, I would like to start with Professor Tenenit first. What do you think about this case? I think she got some uh, steroid intake for uh, a little bit long. So she developed uh, also necrosis, both hip. But the, lie, the, the, the left one is quite typical, the, the head uh, collapse with the intact of the acetabulum. But for the, for the light side, it's more osteopenia of the proximal femur and head is collapsed and elotate of the acetabulum. Uh -huh. So for the light, it's lightly uh, infection. Okay, that's a... That's a very, very good uh, advice for us. Uh, so, uh, Doctor Sibudon, do you do you do you have any any comments? Uh, same with uh, Doctor Tanayit. I think the patient had uh, osteonecrosis on the both hip, and maybe we have to rule out the infection of the right hip now. Mm -hmm. We need a further investigation. Okay. So, uh, any any. Panelist uh, has a diff different uh, idea by Dr. Tanenit. So, so I, I, would, I don't like to start with Dr. Tanenit first because he always answer, answer the right things. <laughs> nobody, nobody can discuss after him. <laughs> okay. So do, do you have any investigation about the infection? Um, yes, there's a plan that we will, I would like to ask about the uh, role of aspiration of the hip. Uh -huh. And another from the basic lab okay. or investigation. Okay. Uh, I have a basic lab to investigation. Do, okay. Can I show you here? Yes. Yes. For the CBC, is, um, the white cell is in normal range and the nodule field was not predominated. The ESR is slightly higher to the 63 and the CRP is 3.18. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is all investigation I had. Yes. So, listen. Yes. I think I'm gonna use the ultrasound and then um, perform the hip aspiration of, of the light, right hip. Mm -hmm. if, if, if this case is in my hand. Uh -huh. 
little bit. For, for me, I I not support the 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 idea of the aspiration. I I prefer the tissue diagnosis. So I prefer the biopsy and the uh, EC scan or MRI guy yeah. or ultrasound. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Tena. I may request the initial film after after the accident first to compare after two months and the initial first to to check any difference from the first time, and then about the laboratory, I may uh, just the lab first and maybe uh, wait for the septic workup, like the culture or something like that. I think a piece of answer will be good guy for a lot of surgeons here because he work in the. In the uh, not not in the center. He work in a big hospital, but but his advice can be useful for a lot of of uh, of uh, of surgeons here. <laughs> I I I think the technique of the aspiration of the hip is very difficult, and I agree with Doctor <laughs> Tirawit about the uh, interop for the the tissue and. Do do you have a two two state or one or one state for the tissue evaluation? Mm -hmm. And I think in in this case is uh, not rule out about the in infection in this case. Mm -hmm. Atit, what is your technique before you proceeding anything? Uh, I I in my experience I have a few cases like this and all my cases is not infected. I I have tried many way biopsy, open biopsy, aspiration. And just uh, go in and put the hip in, and I think um, it's not in fact. I I I, can, I have seen uh, osteonecrosis like this, and I think um, it's like um, have some condolysis of the hip, and it's like a damages erosion of the hip. And I try many way, and I can I cannot see any infection. So do you do you agree that uh, in the normal osteonecrosis, the erosion of the Superior part of the acetabulum is usually not like this feature. No, it's not. I I, I not mean it, it usually it, it usually not, but it sometimes it's happened like this. And um, I'm not sure about the pattern of the erosion. I, I cannot answer what what area that is with erosion. But my answer is that I try many way, and it, it, it's more like in my experience, it's not infected. And if I have a question, I think aspiration is enough. Professor Tanis, can you advise us that? Uh, when 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 we are not uh, when the lab and everything show that there is no infection, is there any chance to have a low gate or something infected? If, if this patient uh. take the herbal medicine for some reason, uh -huh. if you look carefully for the bosses I join, uh -huh. it's not normal. Uh -huh. And you see the hematocrit of this patient is just uh, thirty one. Uh -huh. Also, not normal for the people. Uh -huh. So the the patient gonna have some underlying disease. Uh -huh. But I, I don't know exactly. But the immune response is very poor. Mm -hmm. So you can see the the set rate is uh, above sixty, but CRP is not rising mm -hmm. because the immune of the patient is not normal. Mm -hmm. So the patient gonna have some underlying disease. With poor uh, immune response. Okay. If the patient has the SNSA or some inflammatory disease, the picture of the light is possible for the inflammatory disease. So you have to prove the patient has the inflammatory disease or not. Okay. And okay. for sure, in, 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 in my practice, when we're looking for the, for the late infection between 7 to 10 years after we perform the primary hip replacement, with the not typical of the osteonecrosis, the patient develops secondary infection mm. because uh, in our in our society the patient got the antibiotic quite easy, and 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 aspirate or culture is very difficult. Mm. So for for my practice, we have to investigation for the for the under, underlying disease for this case, and we go to resect and send all pathology and tissue in for the culture or whatever infection or ever uh, inflammatory disease and we put the cement spacer in. Okay, that's interesting.
<laughs> oh, so you will not do the aspiration? Ah, uh, yes. I will okay, proceed please, to the. Please, please proceed. Please proceed. Okay. Um, our team is totally agree with Ajahn Tanadin because we do <laughs> in the same step, in the same manner. Um, we suspect also suspect the chronic septic arthritis and also the osseous necrosis, or maybe the rapidly destructive coxal party. The management uh, we did not aspirate, but we obtained the tissue. Like uh, Professor uh, Tirovit said that uh, we need to uh, evaluate the tissue. We performed a posterior approach with deprivement with the femoral neck resection and apply antibiotics. The findings, the zero sanguinous synovial fluid appearance, there was no pus in the hip. And we see marked fibrous tissue in the hip joint and no caseous or no necrotic tissue. Uh, we see the marked deformed in the right femoral head that the cartilage erosion is extended to the right acetabulum. This is the first stage that we do. Okay, thank you. Who will do the Bridomont and cement spacer? And who will not do uh, who will not do like this? Who will not cut the head out and only total debride? Please, who will do the cement spacer like uh, like Professor Tanit? Please raise your hand. Okay, all. So nobody leave the head behind except me. Okay, I I I I'm not I'm not gonna say. Okay, okay, please. Uh. I, I I said I I try many ways to do with uh, the patient like this, and I my re, my head re, I I did the head resection, but I just resect the 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 head, not the neck. I preserve the neck because um. For the further reconstruction. So, so, so you you gonna preserve the neck yes, for sir. further reconstruction? Yes, sir. The, the head thing for the patho pathology and uh, the culture, but I preserve the neck because sometimes uh, the erosion of the acetabulum, the female neck may be useful in the next next surgery. Okay, okay, okay. So th that that, that you not you not resect the head? I'm not resect. I have, I'm, I'm, I have, I have I'm, a story about that. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not dissect the head. I'm. I will take the necrotic tissue out, but I will not dissect the head. I'm not leave the necrotic tissue, but I will not dissect the head. Yeah, I just. I just talked to my colleague, okay. and we they had the infection, and because of the of the young of the patient, uh -huh. he tried he tried to do the 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 same as uh, you suggest. Uh -huh. And later we have to get in and resect it. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so. When, when 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 you probe it, in fact you have to resect it because because when you not resect the head because because the head gonna be the embedded in the infected uh, space. The hip joint gonna occupy the the femoral head, so we have to resect it because you not resect it. You don't make sure that the remnant of the femoral head in future gonna have a chronic osteomyelitis and retain some organism inside. So when when in future when you not resect it and you have some uh, very small part of the femoral head, we have to get in mm -hmm. the bimen and resect it. Mm -hmm. So we should resect it in the first. And and what and if you say that some head is inside the infected joint. Why not you leave the acetabulum out and take the take the infected whatever cartilage or something out too? Why do you just cut only the uh, the femoral head out? We know that sometimes septic joint we can treat conservatively by doing some antibiotic and get rid of the of the infection. But but that that is the controversy point. That is my 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 it's idea. Not controversy. Mm -hmm. You can treat the septic hip conservatively when it's a little bit acute of the infection. Yeah. Once you can you delay the treatment, and when you do perform the MRI or you resect it, you will find it the remnant of the head is also myelitis ready, and it's gonna collapse, and they're gonna have the remnant of the head. And you have to do the second operation to resect it. Because it's not sure when, when they develop chronic also myelitis and they had a remnant of the head, we cannot for sure go just uh, resect and do primary atopasty. It's not safe. Okay, thank you. So, can you proceed? 
Yes, of yes. course. For the investigation, well, we sent the tissue bone from the right acetabulum with the gram stain is negative for the workup. And we also work up for the tuberculosis too. The AFB is all negative. And also the TB culture. And even the PCI is still negative. For the bone pathologies, there it showed the avascular necrosis of the light femoral head with a needle field around 2 to 3 hyper hyperfield with no ganoloma and no malignancies. The pathology is tissue with stromal needle field is around 5 to 10 cells per hyperfield with no granuloma and no malignancy too. And after that, uh, we retrained for about four months. This is the x-ray after four months of post debridement. Uh, yes. and, and then uh, during that period, do you give any antibiotic or, or something? Uh, we, we give her the antibiotics for about one month. And after that, the ESR and CRP is returned to normal. Uh, yes. So and then, we and then you're waiting another three months. Yes, we're waiting for our uh, investigation because the TB workup and culture is take time. Okay, okay, thank you. So that is the uh, last X-ray before we reconstruction, right? Yes. Okay, so w what do you think about the reconstruction in this case? Yes. Aha, okay, yeah, okay. We have to talk. Usually, when the clinical suspicious of the infection and culture is negative, Okay. But the clinically it should infection. You should have antibiotic free interval. Okay. Should have it. Okay. I I, I agree with Yes, yes, yes. He wait oh, oh, he already wait team and for for and the C B C ESI is normal. So so what what will you do? Do you proceed to the total here or proceed? Yes. Save it on, save it on. After complete treatment of uh, septic arthritis, I will perform the total hip arthroplasty in this patient. Uh, the problem is the shortening in this case. This uh, about uh, five or seven centimeter shortening. Uh, I will test the Traction the patient first to do, do you have the information about yes. the yeah, well, but we didn't work. show the x ray, we didn't send for x ray, but we just grossly examination. We can track her like like limb. To How many centimeters you can traction the patient? It's about five centimeters. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So okay. you can track it down to <laughs> the normal position. Yeah, but slightly forceful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you can touch on maybe a four or five centimeter, then that's okay. It's easy to perform total hepatopathy. In this case, I will use the simulated acetabular component. Okay. Simulated femoral component, metal, and highly costly polyethylene. Okay. And again, I will have to take the tissue for the culture interoperatively. Oh. Okay. Okay. Got this in? This? Uh, I, think, I think I'm going to do like. Doc, um, Ajahn, Ajahn Kopp said that um, we're going to remove the cement spacer and then put the cuff and stem in. And I, I, ha I have a little um, comment that if we want to prevent the shortening, mm -hmm. we can put the cement stem spacer mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. before we wait for the uh, infection to kill. Something like Postelec or something like yeah, that? Yes, something like that. Or custom made. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chairman, any comments? Well, I think I will do the same, but um, you might have a little bit problem about the proximal part of the femur. Uh, it might be deformed a little bit, uh -huh, because uh, the, it might scratch around the, the semen spacer. Mm -hmm. So just only be careful about the proximal part of the femur. The rest is, I think, is normal. Tilawit? Uh, the the I, I think in this case uh, the problem in intraoperative is the the entry point of the femoral stem mm -hmm. because the 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 neck the, the location of the neck has uh, moved superior and and uh, the the fibrosis of this area may 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 make the the surgeon uh, cannot identify the entry point, the, the, the correct entry point uh, of the 
of a female canal. Mm. And uh, we have to identify the, the greatest hole and the, remove the fiber tissue in, in, in that area. Uh, the most pitfall is uh, we entry into the, uh, the less the toe center. Okay, so we nearly run out of time. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a comment about shortening. When, when, when you consider shortening, they have to tie up the shortening, mm -hmm. acquire and adhesory. When you see the, 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 the disease that the patient has shortening because of the, the, the congenital or something, mm -hmm. or structure, neurovascular is shortening. When you lengthening it, it uh, compromises neurovascular quite easy. But the acquire, it means like this, it's normal from the beginning. And you do something, it's shortening. The, the neurovascular and soft tissue is uh, the same normal length. So you can, you can, you can link it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quite, quite different in two tight. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, please proceed. Okay, so uh, we plan to do the second stage. Uh, after we did the procedure approach and also she called plan, send the tissue for the uh, frozen section too and the negative findings. Uh, this is the interoperative first section, the stone monitor field with 0 to 1 cell per hyperfield. And all negative, uh, all the crystalline workup is also negative, no granuloma. So we did the total hip atoplasty with the simulated cups and uh, the, the ceramic femoral head and the choreal stem. It's even a lot of uh, 800. And after we finish all of the component, uh, right now, the patient still very well function of the right hip. Uh, right now, it's about five. Uh, it's about six months post total hip replacement, and it's about ten months post deployment. I called the patient yesterday, and he sh she said that she very happy with her right hip, but she started to have a pain, slightly bit pain of the left hip, and the, the further result have to be. Uh, focus. Okay, so we will deal with the left hip later. Thank you very much, Dr. Pakum.